they feel at very ordinary moments. They could be any family with birthday parties and muddy knees and Wellingtons and pyjamas on the sofa, and then suddenly there's Paul McCartney <laughs> dressed as Elvis right in the middle of it. Or a horse in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Or a hamster in a shoe. <laughs> now, I think the, po the point with the Polaroids is that we've done books of mums, you know, the three of us work on going through her collection in the archive, and this is one that's always been in the back of our minds to do but it's sort of like getting out a treasure trove because there's like a th over a thousand polaroids to go through so it's taken a while to sort of work to put it together but we really think it shows the complete cross-section of her photography and her talent and her eye it's sort of funny um poignant colorful a little eccentric mm. and there's a lot of humor in it so it, there's a lot of mum in in these pictures it's clear that mum had a huge talent and photography and she was a true artist and to be taken seriously yes. especially being one of the first female photographers and I think that at a certain stage she also allowed herself to be taken seriously and then started properly looking after her work and so the Polaroids I think will have yeah. been kept safe. For us they're just family photos but um, because it's Linda and she's a great photographer they're little pieces of art there's one of you cleaning your teeth. You're sort of looking out of the side of your eye. That was the yes. one time he cleaned his teeth and she captured it. It's impressive. <laughs> Normally when you take pictures, you pose for it. But because Linda was taking pictures all the time um, and she'd just pull up a camera, I wouldn't kind of try and smarten up. I just And, you know, so it gets those odd little moments which I think are so great when you look back on them all. What I find interesting, though, is now, with today's sort of technology and devices, you do take pic millions of pictures, like millions mm. all the time, mm. of people brushing their teeth or selfies. And I think it's interesting that at that time, and Mum had a great ability to just click when she, she always worked on film, but she had such a confidence she would take one click and she felt she captured the moment she, she was mm. seeing. And it was the same with the Polaroid. And you've also got to remember, it was the first time you could see an instant image. Mm. And so that's a really interesting thing, because now everything's instant. And the thing about now is, when do you look at them? You take millions of photos, but you never look at them. Mm. I mean, you know, occasionally, you might, if you're bored, you might just flick through them. But uh, they kind of just go away. So with the Polaroids, they stay One, around. Two. What do you think you learned about the family when you look back at these? I mean, we see how remote that farmhouse is. I don't know if it was actually, you know, Mull of Kintyre, but w yeah, was it a craving? It was. Mm. And was it a craving for normalcy? Was it you yeah, trying to... Yeah, I mean, it really all started because I'd been through a very difficult period at the end of the Beatles, when the Beatles were breaking up, and there was a lot of business meetings, um, and they were very heavy. You had to go and sit there and look serious and talk about losing all this money. And it was like, it was like hell, you know. And, uh, but I'd just met this beautiful woman and we were raising a family. So we decided to escape. Mm -hmm. So we escaped to Scotland and lived a very funky life. We loved it and felt very free. They say that every family is dysfunctional in its own unique way. I, what would surprise can people I about yours? Can I stop you there for one second? <laughs> Mum used to have a saying, which is, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your relatives. So that's <laughs> uh, how dysfunctional or crazy. I had this little farm that I'd been advised to get by my accountant, and I wasn't interested in it at all. But Linda came over, we got together, and she said, have you got a farm up in Scotland? I said, yeah, you know. She said, can we go there? And she loved it, so I saw it through her eyes, so when we escaped all the sort of business meetings, we went up there and there was nothing there. I'd never gone and hung photos or paintings or anything. So I was like, Mary was just a little baby. And I, I made a bed for her out of old potato boxes. I mean, it was pretty funny. And that is I mean, actually Stel true. Stella, oh, and on, not the side of the, on the side of the boxes, it said Sharps Express. Yeah. So that was like the bed but was But he made expressed. the kitchen table as well, and we sort of lived in it. It was a two-bedroom little cottage. My memories were Mum and Dad were making Ram and McCartney. They were recording music, and you were cutting up tape and on 8-track and kind of sticking it together, and what, we'd the go off... the kitchen table? No, in a little tiny studio, almost like in a garage. <laughs>
yes. it looked like it was a sort of subsistence life where you created your own fun. Really? There was no one there, right? And it, it sort of, from an environmental point of view, it was a very simple life. And it, I think what it shows is that those sort of values of like not having to have t tons of material possessions to have a good time and to I mean, we sort were of, bored you know, we were, each, make your own we were each other's own time, entertainment. And I think thing. that's why we are so close because we have that foundation to. Yeah. To our family and we were away from prying eyes so we could be a bit silly and you know when you're we're, particularly the ones we're on holiday yeah. away from London where we went to school there's a sense of freedom and I think that really comes across as well. You talk about the farm there's there's animals woven into absolutely mm. every mm. page you see Linda's love you see her early vegetarianism all the stuff that she believes so strongly yeah. in and campaigned in there. <laughs> Stella, you're navigating this path now of ecological fashion, but you have to reconcile that, don't you, with an industry that is screaming at you, buy me, buy me, you need to spend or you need to shop. Is that a conflict in your own world? Yeah, I mean, I've always said if I was a true, true, true environmentalist, I wouldn't create one thing because obviously I'm creating an impact on the planet by making a product. But I believe that the product I'm making is a far better solution to, to what is already existing in, in my industry. You know, we're the second most harmful to the environment uh, currently. And my shoes are not made out of leather. And I think that that's better. You know, I want to try and promote that you can still have a healthy, you know, fashionable, luxurious business and you don't have to kill animals and you don't have to hopefully harm the planet. And when your friends, I mean, memorably, you made Megan's wedding party dress, when she comes in for criticism at her, you know, the private jets and the way she travels. Do you feel that that is fair or do you feel it's misguided, that kind of criticism? I don't think it's really my place to say, if I'm honest, but I think that, you know, the, the two of them are in a very, you know, they're in a very exposed you know, I, situation. Say, I think it's unfair. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, people fly. It's not like, I mean, you, it, it wouldn't help if everyone just didn't fly. That would be like it wouldn't be the world we live in. So you, you have to, like, allow a little bit here and there. And, uh, you know, people think, oh, it's the taxpayers. Those, those flights that they were uh, told off for, they didn't even pay for them. It was like their mates. It was Elton, wasn't it? <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the thing is, come on, you've got to loosen up here, you know. Give the girl a break. It's so interesting when you say we've got to loosen up here because we are meeting at a time when the country feels so incredibly unsettled, where everything has turned into a culture war. You know, historians are invoking the English Civil War. I wonder whether, you know, as, as a man who has sung his way through a revolution in the 60s, whether this feels like a time of revolution to you or something? Like most people in Britain, we, we don't know. Um, it's been thrust upon us through the referendum. There was probably a mistake, I think, the first referendum. Um, and now I don't think anyone quite knows what to do with it. And um, so you've got this kind of crazy thing. I think we'll come through it. I think we always do. I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember garbage in the streets and, you know, people not being able to get buried because the grave diggers were on strike. I mean, that was a pretty rough time. We came through it. So, I don't know, I think we'll come through this. I think it's a mess and I will be glad when it's over. A lot of British families are kind of feeling very odds within themselves. You seem very close, you know, as a family. Is, is, is politics something that does create... I mean, create you know, a... what kind of put me off is I was meeting a lot of older people, kind of <clears throat> pretty much my generation, so, all right, Paul, it's going to be like it was in the old days. We're going to go back. And it was like, yeah? Oh, I'm not sure about that. And that attitude was very prevalent. It's all going to be changed and we're all going to go back to how we were. Do you think that artists have a responsibility to bring people together at difficult times or should they just reflect what's going on? I think artists are just people who just happen to be able to say stuff. So... Um, you know, hopefully, I don't, I don't think it was responsibility, but I think uh, if people have a good thought and put it out, like all you need is love, and put it out to the people and the people accept it, then I think that's a great thing. Give peace a chance. And that was How a great anti-war song. How old were you when you did song. All You Need Is Love? 
Me? That's insane that some scousers from Liverpool that were like, you're in your teens? I mean, you came up with all you need is love. It's well, kind of a good it. one. Well, I think John, that's a good answer. Are you going to do it, Rosalind? Oh, well? John did. That's true. John, that's true. Okay, we'll give that to John. Yeah. But when, Chapeau, you, John. when you step into a lift now in a hotel and you hear the sort of Muzak yeah. lift I version, do. I have a challenge. Of yesterday. I have yeah. a does it make your try to get Does it make your blood run cold, or do you love it? No, I love it. I love it. I mean, you know, it's a song I wrote. So the fact that someone can be bothered to record it, I don't care how bad it is. I don't, I just think, wow. Do you sing along? <laughs> no. The worst thing for John was, because he didn't write yesterday, I wrote yesterday, and he used to get really quite miffed because he'd be in New York and he'd go into a restaurant and the pianist would go, do 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 Paul's. I do, I phoned out, I'm like, I, like, I think I'd go through a whole day without one like reference to you. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, or I'll see a sign on a, like a, a in a shop with the Beatles picture, or I think I'll get home, but then an advert will come up with a song on. So that's the challenge. It's literally yeah, they're everywhere. throughout my day. Do you feel that? I everywhere. don't know. I, don't, I actually don't. Do I, don't I don't do that, actually. I get that all the time. I literally no. get to Mary the end does. of the day. And I'll that's why like Mary's, your, Mary's your favourite child. We've established that. No, <laughs> I no, don't really know. We're, we're, not, we're not getting into that. that. Who was who? Oh, I didn't hear it. No, I love all my children <laughs> equally. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you.